Today, I have a bad unboxing video for you. And we're off to a bad start. Since I've already unboxed it. This is the P2 laser made by Xtool. And there are a lot of people on a lot of the internet making some pretty big claims about this thing. Full disclosure, Xtool did send this thing to me free of charge for review and testing. But all opinions are my own and I'm not going to hold back. Some people are saying that this can cut through a one inch thick piece of acrylic in a single pass. Some people are saying the 55 watt laser is the most powerful in its price range. Some people are saying it's a Glowforge killer. Some people are saying I almost gave myself a hernia lifting it onto this table. Now this will depend on my doctor's availability, but I would like to address all those claims. The instructions tell me to put it back together and carry on downloading software and all that stuff, but she's already apart there. I kind of want to see what's going on under here. These are the you have no warranty stickers. So this is a 24 volt power supply. So this one must be controlling the movement, the control board, light, sounds, all that stuff. And this one over here is the big boy. 35 kV out. So that's for the laser. And then underneath of there is a little transformer. It's covered up with a little thing. I can't really see it too much, but that's all that's on this side. So there's an electric solenoid at the front. This acts as a door lock. So when the power goes on, Pushes that pin out, and that gets stuck in that little hole right there. This looks like the control board, very similar to like what a 3D printer would be. So left and right, up and down, X, Y, Z, Wi-Fi, I'm guessing. There's a secondary board there, and that looks like it's connected into the water pump. So I'm guessing that's water level, temperature, all controlled on a separate board. Starting under the water tank, logically, water pump. That's the water pump into some sort of electronics there. Could just be a noise filter. I don't know what's behind there. I don't care. That is straight into the chamber for the laser next to this big beefy fan with a nice seal on there. There's a little heat sink under here. That must be for cooling the laser. And there's three big fans that I can see. I don't think there's any more behind there. This must be the air pump. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's the air pump. So that's similar to what you'd have on a fish tank. Just a little bubbler. Uh, I'm sure it's just a little bit higher output. And that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything left to see on this that you wouldn't expect to see. Just quickly before I button this thing up, I felt like I should mention everything you see that's black is metal. Some of it's steel. Some of it's aluminum. I had a good look at the insides of the inside, but not so much the inside. There's a distant view camera. There's a close view camera. There's the laser lens and associated goods. Extension port for the rotary axis. Removable slats made out of aluminum. 
This is the closed view camera module. This is a stepper motor that controls the up and down auto focus of the laser head. This is the plumbing for the air assist. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty tidy setup. It's all ready to go. X-Tool provides some cast acrylic sheets, some three millimeter thick basswood, and some corrugated cardboard. In addition to those fine materials, I'll also be cutting some colored acrylic, some extra thick and juicy 100% cotton paper that I use on the printing press, some run-of-the-mill cardstock, spruce pine fir, maple, cherry, all half inch, quarter inch Baltic birch plywood with measured thickness in millimeters, half inch Baltic birch plywood with measured thickness in millimeters, three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood with measured thickness in millimeters, and this little scrap of super expensive ebony that happens to be about 10 millimeters thick. Okay, I had my first hiccup. I tried to connect my M1 MacBook Pro via USB and it would not recognize the machine. I pulled out my mid-2014 MacBook Pro, connected no problem, set up the Wi-Fi, and now I can connect with the M1 MacBook Pro. I reached out to customer support over 24 hours ago, still haven't heard back from them. I'm gonna use Xtool Creative Space for all the tests, but they do also fully support light burn. <laughs> Using the distant view camera, it takes a picture of the bed. So if you have material on there, you can see exactly where it is. Let me show you. Bingo. How cool is that? The distant view camera is great for getting a look at the whole work area. But if you want to look at one specific area in detail, you can use the close capture camera. Cardboard test. I would say that's success. Onward. Three millimeter basswood plywood test. Another win. Clear cast acrylic test. That was so satisfying to watch. The finish is perfect. Sparkly gold cast acrylic test. I didn't think it cut, but it did actually cut. It's just held on by the plastic on the bottom. Again, perfect finish on the edges. Super thick and juicy 100% cotton letterpress paper test. No surprises there. I'm gonna switch to the wood cutting now. For this test, I'm just going to make a line right about there and see if I can get this piece to fall off. Quarter inch Baltic birch plywood test. Whoa. That's pretty good. Half inch Baltic birch plywood test. Three passes on that one, but he got through. I think if I slowed it down, I could do two passes. Three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood test. I very much doubt that they recommend this. Nah, it's 
It's just not quite there. I was going too fast. I'm going to try again. Just won't get it. Solid wood test. Yeah, that definitely worked. As I was recording this video, Peter Brown released the video on his X-Tool P2 where he engraved a piece of corn. In the spirit of one-upmanship, I'm gonna do rice. I'll put down some carpet tape so I can stick the rice to that. So I'm gonna blow away with the air assist. I knew we'd get there. If I hold a light from the side, you can clearly read Peter Brown. I gave it another try, and that definitely works. I forgot about the ebony. That one was scary. Now oh, that's hot. Well, it's fair to say that I beat the material cutting horse to death on the old X Tool P2. She handled it quite well. But now I'm going to try some engraving. Hmm. Well, that made it better and worse at the same time. Okay, so where are we with this? Um, one inch thick material. Can it cut one inch thick acrylic? Well, Xtool has a video of them cutting one inch thick clear acrylic, so it can do it, but I don't think it's feasible to do it. The pink material that I cut was three quarter inch acrylic, and I could get through that with one pass. So yes, it can cut one inch thick material, but I would say it's not reasonable to do that. Number two, is this the most powerful laser in its price range? I would say yes, by about $2,000. Once you cross over that $2,000 more than you spend on this thing, then you're getting into 70 watt lasers, like the Boss 1420 LS. But that laser is the size of Volkswagen Beetle and it costs $7,200 before taxes and shipping. Is it a Glowforge killer? I would say any way you slice it, absolutely it is. The P2 is more powerful, 55 watts versus 45 watts. It's $3,000 cheaper, and it supports light burn. Number four was the hernia. It all feels good. It, it sorted itself out. I went through the checkout process on the three machines that I mentioned, trying to match the laser size and also including a smoke extractor. Here's some screenshots of the prices that I came up with. You can see the P2 is a clear winner in price. The only hiccup I had with the Xtool P2 was with my new computer, the M1 MacBook Pro. It wouldn't connect to the machine via USB, but I could connect via Wi-Fi. I ended up talking with Xtool support. It took them about 36 hours to respond, but once they did, they were very helpful. They basically told me that I need a dongle because the P2 won't support USB-C directly into a computer. I don't know why. 15 bucks. Problem solved. 
I really enjoy this laser and you can see it's already got a permanent spot in my shop. I'm committed to that thing being here for a very long time. I think the lifespan of the laser is 6,000 to 8,000 hours, so we'll see about longevity. I think the smoke extractor is an absolute must, unless you're able to plumb the exhaust directly outside. The P2 also has some interesting accessory options. One of them is the rotary, which I have, a riser, which is hopefully on the way, and an auto feed conveyor system so you can run longer material, which I'm not interested in. I think that's it. From the time I started this video till now, there's been about a hundred other review videos coming out and we're all saying the same thing. If there was some serious fundamental flaw with this thing, I'm sure one of us would have figured it out. If you are in the market for a laser, I'm sure you know your needs more than I do, but this is a solid contender and I'm really excited to see what I can do with it. So be on the lookout for those videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.